is that you can actually build a lot of businesses on top of this platform. So if you have the platform of Pipes Underground, you can you can build businesses on top of that. What what businesses have you been thinking about that can be built on top of this? Oh my goodness, yeah. So this is, if someone beats us to making hyperlogistics happen, we have an easy pivot into building one of these businesses. <laughs> like I, I just, I'm obsessed with hyperlogistics and kind of wish I could be, we was born in a time where it existed, I, I built one of these businesses. I think exact ingredients is a killer business. If you could find a recipe and just hit exact ingredients and the onions come chopped, the spices come like in their correct proportions, you would have limitless access to, to eating whatever you wanted tonight. And you can make it oh, really man, quickly. That'd be so nice. Yeah, that'd be so nice. And cleanup is just putting it back in the magic box, you know? Uh, tool, I think like uh, tool subscriptions is great. I, I think clothing is a huge one. Just like, what do I want to wear today? Let's get it. And then when it's dirty, I put it back in and I don't own a washing machine or a dryer because that's not a service I need to handle myself. Like I'm going to let the cloud handle like cleaning stuff. I love um, that. I love how you think your dishes, like you just put those back into the machine. You don't even want to own your dishes. Yeah, it, it's so inefficient to like, those appliances are so expensive and horrible at small scale. It's more efficient to run those in mass hmm. offsite. So how many oh, times- Oh, another one that I'm so- use this. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. My favorite one is the, the convergence of this in additive manufacturing means that almost anything is a digital file. Anything that anyone creates is a digital file and it goes to a warehouse near you, gets printed with the best 3D printers in the world, the quickest 3D printers, and gets sent to you. So like your print time for that increases dramatically because uh, you don't have to own the hardware. Someone else does. That's one that I'm super excited for. So you can like link in with Deval's 3D metal printer. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then a Vucason, and then somebody can upload a CAD file. He 3D prints it and puts it into your pipes, and then it immediately goes to his pl the, the customer's place. So yeah. then that that brings up the question: like, are you going to do cross city transportation, or are you only going to be inner city? We think the the most immediate value add is between a city because it's still pretty efficient. If you need to get goods from Dallas to San Diego, batching it is, is still like an okay thing to do. It's still okay. pretty quick. I think eventually long-term we're looking at that. Just, it, it'd be so cool. I mean, we've, we've timed it and, you know, it'd be so cool if I could be in San Francisco and run an e-commerce business to anyone and, and I can deliver in three hours to anywhere in the United States. Bananas. Wow. That, that'd be so cool. Like, but we, we think like the real value add is, is so much cost for your delivery items. And I don't want to say the percentage because I, I forget the exact number. A good amount goes into just figuring out the last mile. And okay. most of the time is in the last mile. I don't know, like if you've ever uh, had something delivered and it, it gets to your city and then it's just like, well, can't you just it get takes it? Forever. It takes forever. Yeah. yeah. But then, so essentially, so some 18 wheeler will come into the city, deposit it, and then it'll go on the pipes and then it'll go to your drop off location. And then a drone will take it the last little bit. So that way the drones don't have to go from the logistics yeah. station all the way to the homes. Right. In the beginning. Yeah, totally. Okay. Yeah. Going back to the dishes, how many times do you think somebody would use this per day? That's the big thing. So in a mature environment, we've clocked it at like 30, 35 on the high end. And, and it's weird to get to that number, but when you start counting interactions that you have with things, it, it, it gets up there. Like, especially people with kids. I don't know if, if we want kids to have access to a limitless catalog every single day of toys but they could just get whatever toys. It, it, it definitely, it gets up there after a while. Like, so, so are you thinking, so like dishes, laundry machines, what else is, is there? Like, I, I can't even imagine, I think, I, I guess brooms, maybe like just kind of list a few of the items. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we look for really any tools or consumables or objects on there, there, there's some exceptions. I think like more daily use items where you're using it for a large majority of your day, like headphones, your phone, a computer, stuff like that's probably good to own because your your usage rate is so high. But anything where your usage rate is, you know, below 10%, that's really what we're targeting. So clothes, tools, any, any food, seasonal decorations. Look around here. I, I have a whole thing of electrical components here, all those. Yeah, and, and probably a lot of things I don't own because... You know, I'm saving up for it or I, I don't yeah, have yeah, the, don't have it. yeah. <laughs> so your background is a mechanical engineer.